Today we'll delve into the world of algebra in order to explore quintic equations. An equation involving powers of a variable is called a polynomial equation. A quintic equation is a polynomial equation with degree 5. This way, its general form looks like that. a through f are constants such that a is different than 0. In the early 19th century, mathematicians like Niels Henrik Abel and Evariste Galois proved that there is no general solution in radicals for quintic equations, unlike quadratic equations, cubic and quartic equations. There seems to be something special about polynomials of degree 5, but what is it? Let me know in the comments section your thoughts about it. So we cannot solve every quintic equation using a formula involving only basic arithmetic and roots. However, some quintic equations can be solved exactly. For example, equations with certain symmetries or specific forms. Let's see this example, the polynomial x to the power of 5 minus x equals 0. This can be factored this way, which simplifies to x equals 0 or x to the power of 4 equals 1. The solutions are 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus i. These are some examples of graphs of quintic equations. For most quintic equations, we're forced to turn to numerical methods to find approximate solutions. One of these techniques is Newton's method. Let me know in the comments section if you guys would like to see a video about it, about Newton's method, where I can show in details how it works and why it works. Let's look at this example of a quintic equation. If we put it equals to zero, we can try to find the roots by factoring it into x and this polynomial inside of the parenthesis. Then we can clearly see that one of the roots is zero and the other one we need to find. So if we use all the formulas we already know to solve this quartic equation, we'll find that x is plus and minus one. And these are the three roots of this polynomial. Now, let's suppose we don't know the graph of this function and we're trying to draw it. So we would calculate the derivative and make it equal to zero so that we can see what are the maxima and minima of this function. So again, solving this quartic equation, we get these four points. Another thing to do in order to draw this graph is to calculate the limits. So the limit when x goes to plus or minus infinity, for example, it goes to plus and minus infinity. When it goes to zero from the left and from the right, respectively, we're going to get zero anyway. And the limit for x that goes to one from the right and from the left, we get zero. And same thing for minus one. So after doing all of this, we can have a pretty good idea of how this function is going to look like. Okay, let's see this other example here. Same thing, we can factor it. We get x equals 0 for one of them, one of the roots. The second one, we need to use the formula. One way of doing it is substituting x squared by t, and then it becomes a polynomial of degree 2, and we know how to find its roots. Now we convert back from t to x, and we find that there are three roots in the real numbers, and other two that are complex numbers. Let's see the bisection method or dichotomy method. This is basically a numerical technique to find roots of any continuous function f of x, but this within a given interval. We'll see in details how this method works. So let's see this example here. There are five steps. First one, choose an interval, a, b. This interval, a, b, needs to be such that f of a and f of b have opposite signs. And this can be a little tricky, that's the truth. You need to do it by trial and error. Second, calculate its midpoint, a plus b over 2. Third step, you need to evaluate the function at the midpoint, f of m. Then you narrow the interval. If f of a and f of m have opposite signs, you set b equals to m. Otherwise, if f of m and f of b have opposite signs, you set a equals m. So it depends where your midpoint falls in this interval. And that's the way you're going to narrow it. And then you just repeat the steps 2 to 4 until the interval a, b is sufficiently small. The words sufficiently small here are subjective, of course. In other words, it depends on how good you want your approximation to be. The midpoint m will then be your estimated root. If you are not satisfied with an approximation and you want to find the exact solution instead, you could build a sequence m, n with all the midpoints m of each iteration n. And this sequence converges to one of your roots. To illustrate it, let's try to find one of the roots of this quintic equation. f of x equals x to the power of 5 minus x minus 1. Let's focus on the steps of the bisection method. First, we choose an interval, 1, 2, just because f of 1 is minus 1 and f of 2 is 29, so they have opposite signs. Then, we calculate the midpoint, the first midpoint, 1 plus 2 over 2 equals 3 halves. 
Then we evaluate F at the point M1 and we get 163 over 32. Then we narrow the interval. Our new interval is going to be 1, 3 halves. Then we repeat the process over and over again. And we're going to get this sequence of numbers. Now, look at this attentively. Try to find any pattern here. Well, one of the things I can see is that the denominator of each one of these elements is just 2 to the power of n, where n is a natural number corresponding to the step of this iteration. Now, I don't think that this is a correct notation, but you guys understand what I mean. Come on. So now we can clearly see what's going to be the explicit form of this sequence, right? And we can also clearly see where it's converging to, right? Wrong. And that's why quintic polynomials are so tricky. Even building a sequence that we are sure that converges, and we know that it converges to one of the roots of this polynomial, we have neither any idea of how its explicit form is going to be, nor how to analytically study it in order to find out the exact point where it converges to. I mean, I have no idea. But if you guys have any thoughts about how to analytically find the point where this sequence converges to, let me know in the comments section. So basically, this is the sequence. And of course, finding an explicit way of representing it increases a lot your chances of finding where it converges to. Quintic equations appears in many fields, such as physics, engineering, and even in some optimization problems. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comment section if you would like to see a video delving deeper on a particular aspect of quintic equations or any other subject related to math and physics. If you enjoyed this video, I'm pretty sure you're gonna love this one. See you guys there.